Okay, we shall continue with the second part of the food processing, which is, uh, which is the smoking. Okay, uh, smoking, as I have mentioned earlier, it is part of the curing process. Okay, so what happened during smoking? Uh, it will decrease water activity. Uh, always remember that when uh, one of the preservation techniques, if we want to make sure that our food can last quite a long time because of the microbial growth, we should be able to decrease the water activity so that we will not have enough uh, free water to support the growth of microorganisms. So you have to make sure that the AW or water activity uh, must be lower than 0 0.9, for example. Okay, uh, please refer to the slide of uh, water and water activity topic. Okay. And uh, smoking also causes minimal protein denaturation, which is also good in, uh, in making sure that the protein will not change its conformational, uh, conformational form. Okay. Uh, so, because when protein in nature, it will have different types of conformation of proteins, then you may be change the, the taste and also the texture. Okay. Uh, and smoking also induce smoke particles and as well as addition of smoky flavor. This is one of the main reasons why smoking is, uh, is uh, also highly favorable among consumers because of the smoky flavor. Okay. Uh, effects of smoking, for example, uh, for fatty fish like salmon, okay, the temperature range is about 15 to 26 degrees Celsius. And smoking also have to consider the RH, uh, the relative humidity of the chamber. For example, you can use uh, from 55 to 57. Okay, as uh, our RH in Malaysia is about around, depending on whether it's a uh, rainy season, whether it's a... Uh, uh, dry season, okay. Uh, it can range up till from seventy percent to uh, ninety to ninety five percent, okay. Uh, depending on on the vapor, uh, on the water vapor of the uh, of the atmosphere, okay. So this is uh, suggested for very fish, um, for example, like salmon, the temperature range and also the relative humidity range. Uh, microbial flora distribution in smoke products it will vary and largely dependent on the drying temperature and drying time. Okay, uh, because we know, uh, I think you also learn about different types of microorganism, uh, from uh previous slides or from uh one of the instructors, uh, from I think from Dr. Hawa's uh, slide. Okay, uh, you should be able to differentiate between what type of temperature and what type of drying time that will affect on is it gram positive, gram, uh, gram negative, and different types of microorganism, okay? Uh, so it will have uh, effect on that because it largely depends on the temperature and also the drying time. Uh, and the aroma of smoke products are generated by two main pathways, um, okay? This one you will learn in uh, middle reaction in uh, sugar, reducing sugar. Uh, you will learn in carbohydrate, um, carbohydrate topics, so go back to that notes, okay? Uh, so the two main pathways of uh, generation of this aroma are to one is malate reaction. So this malate reaction will use or is a reaction between the carbonyl groups. So the carbonyl is C double bond O and the amino groups. When we say amino groups, where does it come from? Okay, it comes from the the acid amino, okay, the amino acids of the protein, yeah? because the um, the core of the amino acid, this, the, the main structure or the main uh, component of uh, a protein is uh, amino acids, okay? When we say amino acids, uh, go back to your protein slides and then see um, the, um, the single unit, uh, the single unit of proteins are amino acids, where you have the amino groups and the carboxyl groups, okay? So those amino groups from this protein, NH2, and the reaction between the C double bond O, which is the carbo uh, carbonyl groups, okay, are the uh, involved in the malic reaction. So this malic reaction will produce a smoke aroma, okay? So this is the 
uh, this is a, a more chemistry part. Okay. Uh, the other pathway is the lipid oxidation. Okay. We know that in food, food are made up of proteins, uh, lipids, carbohydrates. So if you have like fatty fish um, and has a high um, lipid uh, content, for example, so you will have a lipid oxidation occurs and those lipid oxidation products will also give the aroma of the um of this uh, smoke products so always remember there are two uh, pathways that produce uh, the aroma of the smoke products one is the Miller reaction between the resin sugar okay and the amino groups okay uh, the carbonyl and amino groups the other one is the lipid oxidation okay so the color development of the smoke products will depend on the carbonyl content eh, the c double bond o uh, high uh, molecular weight phenols okay, and volatile aldehyde. So these are the components that are available. These are chemical components. As we know that food are made up of all these chemical components, right? So these chemical components will uh, have an effect to the uh, development of the smoke products. So the number one is the carbonyl content. Number two is the phenols and number three are the volatile aldehydes. So volatile aldehydes will be uh, volatile because we use high temperature. Uh, so it will develop or it will produce more volatiles. Okay. However, there are drawbacks of the smoking um, process, okay, whereby the during the smoking process, there will um there um compounds which is called polyaromatic hydrocarbons or we call it PAH, okay, will be accumulated in the fish muscle. Okay, this is very important uh, food safety issues, uh, chemical food safety issues where at high temperature that we use, mostly um, components or compound like PAH or heterocyclic amine will be produced. But most of the time in smoke products, PAH, polyaromatic hydrocarbons, are mostly um form and accumulated in the fish muscle okay so this pah will um have an effect on your health where it is a carcinogen okay uh, and it is difficult to remove due to their lipophilic properties so if we have uh food components or food compounds that that has high um uh, lipo uh, lipophilic or uh, hydrophobic um, hydrophobic components okay so most of the PAH will be produced and accumulated okay this content of PAH in the smoked fish will depend on the concentration of this compound in the in the smoke because smoke will produce this PAH um, and captured and accumulated in the fish muscle Okay, then we go to the heating of food. Heating of food is mostly being used in food, right? Uh, this is one of the um, traditional and uh, easy way uh, of, uh, of food to be treated, uh, treated or processed in order to make sure that the food uh, will have a, a food safety or food processing um, parameters, okay? So when we talk about heating, there are two types of heat. One is the moist heat. The other one is the dry heat. Okay, what does it mean by moist heat? Okay, when we talk about moist heat, moist heat meaning that the heat transfer is using water. Uh, uh, meaning that the the uh, uh, the heat, okay, it comes in the formation of steam, uh, for example, such as steam and also boiling. So if the food is in liquid form, it will affect the color, the texture, and also the flavor. Okay, so it helps in softened fibrous structure in meat and also poultry. Uh, water soluble components are extruded into the water because we are talking about steam as moist heat. Okay, uh, as versus the dry heat. Uh, so higher heat is needed. Um, as water can only heat up to 100 degrees and it will become steam, right? So that is moist heat. So if you want to use the dry heat, we have to use a higher temperature than 100 degrees C, okay? So for example, we use grilling, roasting, baking, frying, and microwaving, okay? So heat is transferred 
uh, using air, okay, uh, using fat, metal, and also radiation. Okay, uh, distinct changes in the physical structure. For example, there will be gel gelation, there will be gelatinization of the food, uh, of the food component. Okay. So the degradation of food product, uh, food components of food products during heating. Uh, there will be uh, food that will degrade, for example, the functional components uh, like the proteins, um, the lipids, uh, the carbohydrates, those will be uh, degraded uh, because uh, heat, we know that heat will um, will degrade uh, mostly some of, some of the or mostly all of the uh, food components and major components and especially vitamins. Uh, as vitamins, we know that vitamins, especially the one that is um, hydro, hydrophilic, hydrophilic vitamins, okay, uh, are mostly uh, easier uh, being uh, degraded, okay. Uh, there are also uh, biochemical interaction happens during heating where protein, for example, will coagulate Okay, and some of the fat will be melt and uh, lipid will, will oxidize uh, if we use a uh, high temperature, for example. And change its physical properties. Of course, we have uh, when you heat the food, the color will change. The taste also will be different. Okay, uh, and also the texture. Okay, uh, some of the, especially when, uh, when we want to produce, uh, um, aroma for example in some of the spices okay the best way to produce the aroma is through heating so that's why when we cook at home some of the spices are best uh, fried before rather than for example we add it to uh, to the water or soup uh, in order to have the aroma compound that is being produced by the spices Okay, uh, heat also de deactivate enzymes. For example, uh, this is important where some of the enzymes are involved in uh, browning of uh, vegetables. For example, when right? uh, we can actually blanch the vegetable first for a few seconds and then make sure that and uh, to make sure that the vegetables will last longer uh, because we deactivate the enzyme. Okay. Uh, that is heating. Then we go to freezing. Okay, freezing is one of the important uh processing that is widely being used uh as one of the preservation techniques. So what does uh chilling and freezing do? Okay, it will inhibit bacterial growth and multiply. And then you will ask um if I um keep okay uh keep my food in the fridge. Why is it still go bad, right? Uh, do you have the answer for that? Okay, we will discuss that in the forum, okay? Uh, so during chilling and freezing, uh, it will inhibit bacterial growth or bacteria from multiplication. Okay, the effect, uh, uh, one of the effect is also it will inhibit enzymatic activity. As we know that in, um, in food component, there are also uh enzymes are involved in in the reaction so as for example after harvest the uh, uh fruit and vegetables or if you're exposed to the uh air and also oxygen the enzyme will especially the tpo huh? the poly uh, polyphenol oxidase okay uh, that one you can uh, look in detail and read in detail in the um in the enzyme topic, okay. Um, so it will lower the molecular mobility. That means if there's, uh, you know that um, co food components, okay, they, uh, they, if there are water available in the tissue, they will be, um, mobile, right? So if you freeze that that uh that water, that means there is no mobility happen. So you you limit the uh, molecular mobility, so the rate of deterioration rate will reduce. Okay, and it weakens hydrophobicity. Hydrophobicity meaning that um hydrophobic compounds okay um will be weaker. Okay, and then the cell will dehydrate. Uh, dehydrate meaning because you freeze the water uh in the tissue. Okay, uh, and also uh, always remember that uh. 
free store cycle of free store effect will have a detrimental effect to the most of the tissue, especially the proteins. Okay, uh, so you have to be careful in terms of uh, you know, like keeping food at home or in industry. We we don't want this free store cycle to happen. So if you want to keep your uh food products okay uh, better uh, longer in the freezer you should use a smaller portion okay and then you use a uh, this small portion uh, for cooking for example okay and uh, water will crystallize definitely okay uh, after it's uh, it form uh, freezing and it will form these ice crystals so these ice crystal will cause formation of large crystals depending on so many different factors like freezing rate, uh, how fast uh, is the freezing, whether you, you will use rapid cooling, for example. Okay, So this formation of ice crystal also is very important as, uh, as part of the chilling and freezing parameters that need to be controlled. Okay, uh, other than that, uh, chilling and freezing, it affects the texture where the protein uh, the integrity of the protein okay uh, and also it will affect the uh, water holding capacity so this one uh, water hold holding capacity meaning that uh, how much of this for example food components like lipid or proteins uh, are able to hold the water so when you have this um, Capacity of holding the water higher, okay, that means your food will not be that dry, okay. So when you have a, a water holding capacity that is lower uh, because of the disruption of this protein integrity, so that means most of the water will be leached out from the uh, from the tissue, and then um, right after when you thaw, for example, the uh, the food products, okay, or the commodities, then uh, it will be uh, dry. Right? It will be dry and you don't want that to happen. And also, uh, pH changes. pH will change as uh, chilling and freezing, okay. And some of the gel, for example, you have uh, this formation of gel. It will lose the gel strength because uh, water, also, uh, if you go back to the water notes, okay, we know that water has a very important interaction with all the uh, food components. So that's why it is important for you to master the uh, water topic first. Okay, uh, Because you have to understand that everything um, that happens, most of the reaction that happens uh, in food are uh, actually related to water. Okay. All right, then uh, freezing, okay, freezing is actually the water, it will form ice, right? Uh, and then a frozen water fraction in the muscle, it constitutes the basis for the chemical quality deteriorating process occurring in the frozen fish. Um, okay, and then this ice formation, if the ice in cell uh, if ice is formed in the cell, it will disrupt the integrity of the cell. Uh, like I mentioned, because um, some of the ice that uh, that are uh, formed, they are actually large crystals. Okay, uh, so when they are large crystals, they will disrupt the cell integrity. Uh, one of the way to prevent the formation of large crystal is to use rapid cooling. That means you cool the um, uh, the food commodities or food products first before you freeze them. Okay, uh, this will also affect the quality during thawing. Okay, freezing will also uh, affect the quality during thawing. Okay, uh, so uh, just now we are talking about these large crystals. So for example, uh, when ice crystals are large, it present in high amount or even they are irregularly distributed, okay, it will irreversibly damage uh, to food. Uh, uh, so this can happen if you have uh, large crystals, okay. Uh, so uh, therefore, uh, the growth of the ice is a very crucial parameters 
and needs to be controlled during frozen food processing and also storage. Okay, so one of the way you can, uh, you can prevent this is using the rapid cooling. I think this one is being used mostly in the food industry. Okay. Okay, next, next we go to the, um, this one is the examples of this uh, microstructure changes of frozen cup uh, under, um, this is uh, example of the work that is being done before, okay, to, um, to compare uh, the formation of this um, crystal formation, okay. Uh, this one is actually comparing the freezing rate, uh, the freezing rate. Okay, let's see. Um, this, if you see from the AF, IF and UIF, okay. Okay, we shall continue. Uh, this one is the um, study that is being uh, done to compare how these uh, different types of freezing will affect the microstructure of this. Uh, this one is a frozen carp, uh, a type of fish. Okay, so the AF is the air freezing. The IF is the immersion freezing. The UIF is the ultrasound freezing. Okay, so if you compare the ice crystal diameter, uh, the biggest one, the large, uh, the larger crystal will form at the air freezing, while a smaller size uh, crystals will be formed using emission freezing, and a much smaller size of ice crystals will be formed using ultrasound emission freezing. Okay, so the level of this freezing rate will affect the size of the ice crystals. So at low freezing rate, larger ice crystal can be obtained. And uh, in contradiction, a large number of ice crystal are formed. Okay. And then if we use this, this is part of the technology. Okay. We can use this ultrasound uh, immersion freezing. Okay. If we use this ultrasound uh, immersion, uh, the parameters that is suggested by she at all nine uh, two thousand nineteen. If we use around ultrasonic power of zero point three eight watt per centimeter uh, square and about sixty minutes, which is about one hour, uh, on the application of this ultrasound assisted freezing, uh, we can increase the freezing rate. So when you increase the freezing rate, the smaller ice crystal can be, uh, can be formed. Okay. So this level of freezing rate uh, will affect the size of ice crystals. So lower freezing rate, larger ice crystal can be obtained and large number of ice crystals are formed. Okay. So during the uh, freezing process, ice crystal can occur outside the cell first and then the change of the solute concentration will cause the intracellular water to pass through the cell membrane and deposit on the extracellular ice crystal. Therefore, the freezing rate, when the freezing rate is low, the intracell water continue, uh, continue to migrate outside or outward, causing the uh, increase of extracellular ice crystal and cell dehydration. Okay. Um, also, uh, you should remember that the thickness of the uh, thickness of the frozen food, okay, thickness of the frozen products, and then the surface heat transfer coefficient and refrigerating medium temperature has been widely studied or explored to increase the freezing rate. 
Okay. Some studies mention that thinner samples had a, a faster heat transfer and the surface uh, from the surface to the inside and water transform into ice quickly. Okay, so from this uh, figure, we can know that as compared to air freezing, if we use a bit of uh, a bit of uh, technology using ultrasound freezing, we can actually reduce the formation of large ice crystal and the integrity of the cell can be maintained. Okay. Okay, and then this one is the formation of rigomotis. Uh, what is rigomotis? Rigomotis is a uh, postmortem. It will happen in a um, in a tissue, eh? tissue. Okay, so it a postmortem change which result in the stiffening of the body muscle due to the chemical changes in the myofibril. Myofibril is the one. Uh, if, if it is being touched in the uh, protein, then you can actually see uh, the myofibril are mostly in the muscle, in the muscle structure, okay? Um, so this rigomotis uh, helps in estimating the time since death as well to ascertain if the body has been moved uh, after death or for example, uh, how long does uh, this uh, food has been uh, dead, for example, has been harvested or has been uh, has been there. Uh, so it is um, used as a freshness uh, of uh, seafood, for example. Okay. So intracellular uh, ice crystal in red salmon muscle, you can actually see this is post rigor. This is pre rigor. That means after post post rigor, the uh, ice formation will be will be bigger or will be uh, formation of the ice crystal will be higher. Okay, uh, so this one is the white salmon muscle. This is red salmon muscle. So normally we will eat this, the the orange color or the white salmon muscle. So the uh, rigor mortis will cause the muscle to become hard. So we don't want that to happen, especially in muscle or meat. Eh? For example, the red meat. We don't want it until it change to the rigomotis. Okay. Then we go to the um then we go to the feeling. Okay. Uh, so feeling can be hot feeling or cold feeling. When we say hot feeling that means the liquid this one applies to uh, mostly to uh, liquid products. Okay. Uh, for hot feeling, this liquid is uh, heated to a temperature of 90 degrees in order to remove any harmful microorganism which may be in the product. Then the heated fluid is then um, filled, uh, uh, put into the bottle and then the bottle is capped and turned on uh, upside down to ensure the cap is sterilized properly. Okay, finally, the product are rapidly cool. And this process must be done carefully. Even a single drop in temperature before the right time may result in the improper sterilization or unsafe product. This one banyak, uh, a lot being used in the um, liquid products. Uh. And then other than the hot feeling, we also have the cold feeling. Okay, So the cold feeling, in contrast to the hot feel method, which uses heat to sterilize, Cold feeling utilize extreme cold to kill bacteria. So, uh, in the microorganism, uh, microorganism slide or topic, you you can differentiate, uh, whether you use a high, very high temperature or use very low temperature in order to make sure that there is no formation or there is no growth of bacteria. So, in this case of cold feeling, we will use extreme cold to kill the bacteria or make sure that bacteria will not grow anymore. Okay, so this cold field process will blast food packaging with icy cold air to sterilize uh, before it's being filled with food. Okay, the food also remains cool until it is time to fill the containers. So this cold feeling is widely used or popular with many of the uh, clients that means food industry because they do not need to use preservative. Uh, this one, uh, 
uh, mostly being used in juice eh? or other food additives to protect food from high heat of the hot feed process. Okay. So I will stop here first and I will continue to the next slide in the next video.